A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Something especially important for women living in rural communities. There is an opportunity to participate in a rural women survey shedding light on the unique experiences that women in remote and rural and regional communities face. Your responses could inspire change and form part of a collective voice to be featured in a new documentary on rural women. Danielle McAlpine-Johnson is an award-winning film and documentary producer who leads Cheeky Mac Productions. Danielle's joining us. Hey, Danielle, welcome along to 2020. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. Danielle, you are looking to connect with a thousand women from rural, regional, even remote communities to be a part of a survey. What's the purpose? Yes, yeah, thank you, Neil. Uh, so we are seeking a thousand voices because we're trying to sub- uh, substantiate our next documentary titled Rural Daughters. And um, if we can garner, you know, over a thousand women's stories and, and their perspective of living in triple R areas, then it's not just my story we're sharing. It's, it's, a, it's a story that is nationwide. And I think when you have that, that um, amount of um, research and, and uh, evidence behind your story, it can really share a statistical snapshot of what these women are really going through. And it, it just adds, adds so much value to a documentary. I guess for city women, uh, there could be a cluster, there could be hundreds or thousands uh, with relatively easy access if you stood on a street corner or in a shopping centre. But what's the value here, seeking the insights of Christian women in rural Australia? Uh, I think, I mean, women, I, I grew up in um, in a rural area. I, I lived there for 18 years and then I moved to metropolitan areas. So I lived between... Um, Melbourne in Australia and then internationally and have now recently moved back to rural areas and although there are many similarities that women go through there's a huge amount of unique experiences that um, triple R women face on a daily basis so everything from I think gender inequality and traditional gender norms are still quite prevalent uh, down in the regions there's the distance and isolation higher unfortunately higher rates of domestic and family violence um, take place in in rural areas uh, the health health care services are, are quite challenging at times the access um, access to, to child care and uh, you know networking opportunities there's just so so many variations down um, in these regions that I think women, uh, extraordinary in overcoming and finding ways to uniquely live their life and live a purpose-driven life despite all of these challenges. What sort of things are you wanting to know from the women listening to our conversation now who could respond to your survey? I mean, I guess if you're living in r- rural, regional, remote communities, uh, the sorts of natural disasters you might face, bushfires, floods, uh, there might be particular health issues when you don't have easy access to health services. Uh, what sort of impressions are you looking for from the women? I think, um, I mean, the the survey, will it, it is all anonymous. So I just, um, I think that's important to share with the women in case they want to share some deeper stories about how they've found uh, opportunities and ways to overcome these challenges. So, you know, there might be a, a woman who unfortunately has been diagnosed with a particular um, health issue and she doesn't have the access she needs. Therefore, she needs to travel three, four, some seven hours to, to a hospital. I think that takes an incredible resilience to be able to overcome that whilst juggling um, family life and community life and work and purpose and ministry. And so we just want to hear what these women are going through and the unique uh, opportunities that they're creating out of out of the challenges that they experience on a daily basis. And beautiful to think uh, if you are a rural woman living in one of those three R communities, as you say, uh, that somebody is interested to hear what my point of view is because you mentioned things like domestic violence. Uh, there might be different 
societal attitudes. Uh, there might even be some racial issues in communities and things like that. But uh, you're asking rural women what they think. They're not overlooked in your survey. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really important to highlight. Often the resilience and the challenges and the incredible success stories of these triple R women are overlooked frequently in the media. And so we just really want to fill that gap and pick up that mantle to be able to share those experiences with the nation and hopefully internationally and just say, hey, look at these incredible women, look what they're going through, look what they're overcoming and and maybe we can tap into their untapped or some of them untapped potential to make this nation a better place. You know, we all have a unique purpose and um, and a divine reason for being here on the planet and I think once we tap into that for women, um, we can really see some issues within society start to shift. You know, instead of sidelining some of these women uh, because of some of the issues that we're still facing, let's elevate them and and see how the world changes. (laughs) What about the thought, um, you know, I'm going to tell you my attitudes. I'm going to give you my opinions. I'm going to respond to your survey. You're looking for a 1,000 people. What happens to the detail that I'm going to share with you, because obviously when you've got some research, uh, I know you're doing this in some level of partnership with a university research project, but you're going to be crunching numbers and you're going to be having findings about what happens with rural women, and, and that's where the influence happens, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so we will collect all of this data, and, and or the university will. It goes directly to the university, and they will come up with a, um, a a report that will go out to many other professors and scientists around around Australia and around the world. That will it's a, a white paper essentially, and people will be able to access that information. But for our purpose, we will be using it as um, as a piece to quantify the experience of these women and substantiate our do- documentary. A book will be coming out titled Rural Daughters. And it will also be used in study guides for Australian schools to be able to study the book and the documentary. So I feel like um, we have the ability to give these women a voice that is actually going to change, change, hopefully change the landscape and, and potentially change and inspire lives um, and address a, a policy, which I think is you know at another level. Danielle, what is the first question that comes to mind for you uh, that women will want to respond to? It's not uh, one of these surveys that, oh, my goodness, there's a lot of questions here. I'm not sure I want to respond to that. What one's going to drive rural women to say, you know what, I need to have my opinion known here? Is there a question for you that comes to mind? Oh gosh, that's that's a tough question, Neil. <laughs> I think there's probably, depending on your experience, um, there's probably a few questions. But I think isolation is a huge thing for women, um, and access to healthcare and childcare is is really huge. And and um, you know, there's some of the really serious issues that need to really shift. But then you've also got issues like tall poppy syndrome, where you know Australia has been birthed out of that egalitarianism that came from, um, you know, the Scots and the English and the Irish coming over to Australia and and really wanting to get rid of that hierarchy that comes with living over there and make sure that everybody was equal here. But by doing that, we've created a society where we cut people down um, and we, you know, if they rise above or if they're exceeding or doing too well, we, we, we tend to cut people down. And I think there's a lot of women that are really wanting to step out in their calling, in their purpose, and do extraordinary things. But there's a barrier there um, of fear of going, oh, my gosh, if I step out, I'm going to be torn down or people are going to think that I'm self-promoting or, you know, whatever it is that we we feel. But I just want to say to those women, it is very real and you're not alone and, um, and we all have to really start to celebrate each other and not tear each other down when somebody's succeeding. I mentioned that you are an award-winning film and documentary maker. And so when we're talking about a survey and you're looking for a 1,000 rural women to participate, clearly there's going to be findings from the research. You've mentioned that there is a book that will be in the making. 
then uh, no doubt there's some sort of documentary. Uh, is this something that's driving your next production? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, documentary and, and film, that's our, um, well, not only our bread and butter, but it's, we, we believe it's our purpose and our calling. Um, we absolutely believe in the ability um, to become vulnerable and transparent on screen to help others do the same, which I think always leads to a collective healing in society. And I think we have an ability through storytelling and through the screen to really touch the human heart in ways that other media sources and avenues you know, um, don't don't have. So I think it's a really important place to be able to share really uh, prevalent issues, but also share those issues through a lens of hope and say, hey, yes, we, we're addressing this, but there's also solutions. And let's have a look at these incredible women who are providing solutions. Well, I think it's not just a survey, but potentially an opportunity to be a part of how the rest of Australia views rural women. It may even be a part of Australian history. One of these days when you've got a documentary film being made about the findings, the outcomes of this survey, you've already got a wonderful uptake. As I note, uh, there's over 700 responses already. You're after a thousand responses from women who are in rural, regional, remote communities. Um, how long does it take to do the survey, Danielle? Uh, it only takes fifteen minutes to do the survey, and um, and women can. Yeah, I think it's important again to reiterate that you do not have to put your name on it. You don't do not have to uh, make it known who you are. It can be anonymous if you choose. And so you can be as honest as you want. Well, you could make yourself a coffee and you could participate in something and you're specifically looking for Christian women to make a contribution here in doing the survey. Let me give the website where listeners can go and take part in this survey and looking for a thousand women. CheekyMac.com Cheeky Mac, that's C-H-E-E-K-Y-M-A-C Dot com, And you have until the 30th of September, so there's a little bit of time in there to be able to get your survey in. As I say, 700 already responded, looking for a 1,000, and it's the largest survey of its kind anywhere. So a wonderful opportunity to participate. Write down that website now so you don't miss your opportunity, cheekymac.com. Danielle McAlpine-Johnson is an award-winning film and documentary producer. She leads Cheeky Mac Productions. Why don't you be a part of that? Danielle, thank you so much for giving us an insight into your next project now on 2020. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. God bless you and take care. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.